container image signing with Cosign and Jenkins. One way to prove that an artifact was created by you is to sign that artifact. In the past, this process could be a little complex because the tooling around it wasn't very user-friendly. However, there are tools today that greatly simplify this process. In this video, we're going to provide a short introduction how you can use Cosign and Jenkins together in order to create a simple container image signing and verification process. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller. It's version 2.319.1. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. And on that agent, I have Docker and Cosign version 1.4.0. We have a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. Now, this video picks up where we left off, where we were creating container images and pushing them to GitHub Container Registry. I'm assuming that you've watched that video, but if you haven't, the link to that is also down in the description. Let's take a quick look at our sample repository. What we have is a Docker file and a handful of different Jenkins files that we're going to be walking our way through. So first off, what we want to do is go ahead and set up a job that is going to create our image and push it into GitHub Container Registry. Now, this job is the exact same job that we had at the end of the previous video. So I'm going to go ahead and create a job called cosine sign pipeline, click OK. I paste in my URL for the SCM, which is right here. We'll go ahead and do main and Jenkins file dash one. Now, if we were to take a look at Jenkins file dash one, we can see here that we've already got a GitHub token set up so we can interact with GitHub to push our image. So we're doing a build, a login, a tag, a push, and then a log out. So a fairly straightforward container image build tag push process. No big deal there. So let's go ahead and click on build now and let's see what happens. If we take a look at the output of this job, we're doing our build which will take just a moment. Now we do our tag, we do our push, and then finally we do our logout. So if we come back over to GitHub and click back on our repository, what we now see here for, in packages is we have the Jenkins example cosine package. And if you notice, the tags that we have are just 85-204, which is the only tag that we have at this point. So we've successfully created our image and pushed it to GitHub. Now, before we can get started actually signing our image, we first have to set up some credentials for Cosign. And if we take a look at the Cosign documentation, there is a quick start. What we're going to do is we're going to generate a key pair. We're going to sign that image, and then we'll store that signature in the registry. And then finally, in a separate job in a few moments, we'll verify that that image is correctly signed. So let's go ahead and generate our key pair. So I've got cosine generate key pair. So let me open up my shell and just paste this in. And what we're going to see here is it's asking for a password for the private key. If you're familiar with creating SSH private keys, this process is pretty similar. However, when we are needing to pass in the password to cosine within Jenkins, it won't work because that's not interactive. So fortunately, Cosign gives us the ability to set an environment variable that will be read to replace the input of this private key password. So here's how we do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do an export cosine password. And that's the magic environment variable. And I'm going to set it to password123 obviously a very secure password. So we'll go ahead and hit enter, and then let's run generate key pair again. So since we had the cosine password environment variable already set, then when we ran generate key pair, it generated two files, a cosine key and a cosine pub. And when it generates them, it generates them right where you're running the cosine binary. Now, in order to go ahead and use Cosine to sign our image, what we're going to need to do is set up two credentials. So let's go back over to Jenkins. 
And let's go ahead and add in our first credential. And the first credential, maybe not so obviously, is we're going to add in a secret text for our cosine password. But what is the ID that I need to set for that? Well, let's go over and take a look at our Jenkins file two, because Jenkins file two is the pipeline that is going to sign our image. So here we can see we have cosine password and the ID is going to be cosine password. So I'm gonna copy that and go back over here. So I have ID, description, and the secret is password one, two, three. So that's our secret text. So that gets our cosine password. But now we need to set up a different credential for our private key because we're gonna be using our private key to sign the image. If we take a look again at our Jenkins file two, we have a cosine private key and we're gonna have it named cosine dash private key. But what is the type of credential that we need to use for this? Well, if we go back over and look at the documentation, what we can see is that we need to pass in a file to cosine sign. It'll be dash dash key, and then we're passing in cosine sign, and then we give it the image name. So what we need to do in Jenkins is create a secret file. So let's go back over to our credentials. Let's add a new credential. We're gonna do a secret file. The ID is gonna be cosine private dash key. I'll go ahead and make it the same for the description. And then what we need to do is we need to go and grab our private key that we're going to include. So I have cosine and there is my private key. So that looks good there. Let's go ahead and click on OK. So now we have our cosine password. We have our cosine private key. Let's take one more look at our pipeline. Now for this pipeline, we are still going to do the full build tag push. But after the push, we're going to go ahead and render out what it, the version of cosine is, just so we know what it is when we signed it. And then we're going to say cosine sign, dash dash key, cosine private key, which is being loaded into this environment variable. And then we include the path to the image that we want to sign. And in this case, it's GitHub container registry and our full image name. So the difference between Jenkins file one and Jenkins file two is we have two new credentials and we have a new stage to sign the image. So before we go ahead and do this, what I want you to do is let's take a look at our packages one more time. So if we take a look at this package that we already have, we can see here that we have an install from command line and we have just a single tag just one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this just to make sure that we start fresh here as we're getting ready to push this new image back up. So now at this point, I have no packages associated with this repository. Let's go back over to our job and let's modify the job to run Jenkins file dash two. Okay, so we click on save. And then let's click on build now. And let's watch what happens. So we do our clone, we do some cleanup, we do a fresh build, we do our login, we do our tag, we do our push. We see our cosine version, which is 140. And then we run cosine sign dash dash key. This is our environment variable that contains our secret file and then the path to the image. And then it says pushing signature to our GitHub container registry. So let's go over to our container registry and see what this looks like now. So if we click back on cosign, we look at packages. Now notice what we have here. We have, instead of just pulling the image, with the tag of 85204, instead, what we now have is a Docker pull with 
again, up to cosine, but now we have the SHA-256, which is actually the signature. So now we have two image tags. We have the base tag that we sent up before, 85204, and now we also have the signed version of this image. Now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and verify this image. So we can use the cosine binary also to verify the image. And in fact, we have a new job for this, which is now Jenkins file three. So let's take a look at it. This one's much more stripped down. All we're going to need to run is cosine verify, and we need to give it a key. But this time the key is our public key instead of our private key. If you're used to key management, this sort of makes sense. Because if you're checking the validation of an object, usually you pass it the public key of that object to verify the signing, not the private key. So before we create our job to actually run our verify pipeline here, what we want to do is go ahead and set up a credential for public key. So if we take a look back here real quick, what we want is cosine public key, which maps to cosine public key for the ID. So I'm gonna copy that. Let's go back over to credentials. I'm going to create a new credential that is also going to be a secret file. The ID is cosine public key, and now I'm going to browse, and let's go to cosine pub, and click OK. And now let's go back over and create a new item called cosine verify. But instead of creating a pipeline, I'm just going to copy from my other job, and then we'll make one small change, which is changing Jenkins file two to Jenkins file three. Let's go ahead and click on save and click on Build Now. If we take a look at the output of this job, what we see is cosine verify, we're passing in our public key, and then it gives us the information that it finds. The cosine claims were validated, the signatures were verified against the specified public key, and any certs were verified against the Fulcio roots. At this point, we have verified that this image was signed by the private key that was associated with this public key. So we can trust that this image is safe and has not been tampered with. Why should you sign your container images? First off, to be able to prove your identity. If you create an image, it's nice to know who built it. You might want this for either internal purposes or this might be a requirement by customers as part of releasing packages to them. Secondly, by signing images, this prevents someone else from falsely claiming that that image is theirs. This is really important. If you have other parties that have access to your container registry and can push images that can claim were owned by you. And finally, as we've mentioned before, by signing your images, this can prove that they have not been tampered with. If you have multiple instances of an image, it's nice to verify that no one has changed it. You might also want this to ensure that the contents of an image match what was expected. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.